Have you ever wondered when you should use the place linked, place embedded commands, or when you should convert a layer to a smart object? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm Daniel Sorensen. And when you're combining images in Photoshop, or compositing images as we say, there are a few things you have to keep in mind. First and foremost is that Photoshop is resolution dependent. That means that every Photoshop document has a fixed dimension and a fixed number of pixels per square inch. What that means is, if you try to scale an image up, you've got a problem because Photoshop's going to take that same amount of information and simply spread it out over a larger area. The quality is going to go down. You're going to be degrading your image. So we want to avoid scaling beyond 100% if we possibly can. Now when you're compositing images, another thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to start out with images that are very close in resolution. That means they're close in the physical dimension and they're close in the number of pixels per square inch. If you try to composite images that are of different resolution, most likely it's going to be obvious and people are going to think your image looks fake. So let's take a look at the way we can combine images in Photoshop. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. First thing let's do, let's go up to Window, Workspace, make sure we're in Essentials Workspace, and Reset Essentials. Then I'm going to drag the Layers panel out, close up these other layers by clicking on this Collapse Icons button here. And now let's create a new document, Command-N on the Mac or Control-N on the PC. It's a print document, so we're going to be working in inches. I'm going to make it 10 inches wide. 8 inches high. Now this is really important. The resolution for prints typically is 300 ppi at the actual dimension the document will be printed in. So you always want to make the document the largest size that is going to be used. So for example, if this was going to be used for a movie poster, I would make this 27 by 40 at at least 300 ppi. You make the largest document first, and then you can always repurpose it and downsize it or scale it down. Once again, Photoshop is resolution dependent and we do not want to scale up if we can possibly avoid it. Since it's a print document, I'm going to change it to CMYK. And then I'm going to say Create. All right, now we're going to bring in our images. We're going to composite this car into this sand dune. As is typical with Photoshop, there are several ways to accomplish the same thing. Okay, so Adobe has changed the way that we uh, place images in the latest version of Photoshop. And it's actually a really good thing because it makes it very difficult to be destructive with our images. I mean, you really have to work hard to uh, be destructive with your images. Okay, so let's look at a couple of ways to place our images. We can go to File, Place Embedded, or Place Linked. Let's do Embedded first. So I'll go to the dunes and click OK. Now one thing I forgot to tell you, it's going to be extremely important that the resolution of all the images you're working with is consistent. This says that it's at 12% of the original. I don't think that's what I was expecting. I'll say OK and then Command Z. Let's open up that document and take a look at the resolution. So I'm going to go to Image, Image Size. So, the resolution is actually at 72. This typically happens when you take a picture with your phone or with a camera. The camera will record it at 72, and then you'll get this enormous physical dimension. In this case, we have 83 by 55 inches. That's why it comes in at 12%, is because it's basing it on this size and this resolution. What we need to do is change the resolution to 300 to match our target document. So be sure you uncheck Resample, change this resolution to 300, click OK, save the document. Now let's go back and try that place embedded once more. And now it comes in at 50%, which is far more realistic. It also automatically scales the document you're placing so that it'll fit within the new document. In this case, I want to scale it up so that it completely fills the space. So I'm going to hold down the Option key. You no longer hold down the Shift key to constrain proportions. You hold down the Shift key to distort the image. All right, so I'm going to scale it up and then hit Return. Now, notice this symbol 
over here in the Layers panel. And if I roll over, tooltips will say Smart Object Thumbnail. This symbol is the symbol of a smart object. So automatically, Photoshop has turned this into a smart object. That means the original image in its pristine form is written into the document and held in the background. So we can scale this and make changes completely non-destructively. So let's say we wanted to scale this. I'll do Command T, our transform. And I'll just uh, hold down the Option key and let's scale it up. I'm at uh, about 76% now. I'll hit Return. And that was completely non-destructive. Now, if this had been placed as a regular layer and scaled down to 50%, Photoshop automatically throws away the information it no longer needs. And then if you want to scale it back up, it doesn't have that information, and it has to take the information that it does have and spread it out over the new area, which means the image is going to become softer and degraded. Quality goes down. This way, we are referencing the original image. We can scale it up or down without losing quality, providing, of course, we don't scale it beyond 100%. Okay, let's bring the car in using Place Linked. However, before we do that, we have to make sure that the car is the same resolution as this document. So let's go ahead and open up the car, check its image size, uncheck resample, make sure we change resolution to 300, click OK. Save it, and then you can close it. Now let's go ahead and place linked, and we will flip it. I know I'm going to want the car flip because of the light source. So right click and choose flip. And then I'm going to hit uh, return or the check mark up here. Now let's create what we call in video a garbage mat. That's where we just create a very loose mask. So I'm just going to take the lasso tool and very loosely go around the car. And I'll put a feather on it just so it'll look a little nicer. And then add a mask. This will give us a chance to see the relative size of the car to the sand dunes. In this case, the width of the car's uh, wheels has to match the tread marks here. So this looks like it's a little bit big to me, so I'll do Command T. Now, when I first updated to version 2019 and used the Place Link command, there was an issue with scaling. If after scaling the layer, I went back to scale it again, the Transform tool always read 100%. So although it was non-destructive in the sense that the linked image itself was not actually changed, I could not tell what the relative size of my composited layer was to the linked image. There was no way of knowing if I was going over 100% of size of the linked image or not. Recent updates seem to have fixed that problem. Now, as with embedded images, the transform tool always reflects the percentage of the size of the actual linked image. But there is another issue to keep in mind with linked images. If we move the document, let's say I take the car out of this folder, and we come back here and we look in our layers panel, there's a question mark here next to the link. That means it doesn't know where this file is. And so if I tried to scale it now, it looks okay, but then when I release it and hit return, it's going to say it can't do it because it doesn't know where the linked file is. So it'll just return to the size that it was. So we'd have to drag that one back in where it was originally. Then it can find it and it's happy. So why would somebody want to link a file rather than embed the file? The only reason I can think of is file size. Embedding a file is going to make the document much bigger because it's going to take the original and write it into the code of the new document and make the file much larger. So if you're working on a very large file, like a movie poster, say it's 27 by 40 at 300 PPI, that could get really difficult, particularly if you're working on a laptop or a, or a computer that doesn't have a lot of processing power. So maybe it would make sense in that case to link the images. Otherwise, I think you're much better off just embedding the images to begin with. Okay, let's uh, get rid of this image. 
I want to point out you can also simply drag an image from your desktop, drag it in. It will scale it to fit the new document size. I'll click OK. And notice that it has a regular looking smart object symbol here. Again, I would right click to flip it, hold the option, scale it down somewhere around there and hit return. And now I could scale it back up. I'll put my garbage mat on. Just to check the size. Now there's one more technique for compositing images that I want to discuss. And it's the technique that I probably use the most often. And that is simply dragging and dropping from one image into the next. So let's say that I've got my two images sitting here side by side. I could simply drag from either the document window or from the layers panel and drag it over and it copies and places it into the new document. There's one problem, however. If you'll notice over here, in the layers panel, there is no symbol indicating that this is a smart object. So if I transform this and uh, scale it down, for example, and hit return to perform the transformation, that has been a destructive move. So now if I try to scale it back up, even to its original size of 100%, I'm going to degrade the image because when Photoshop scaled the image down, it threw away the pixels that it didn't need. And now when it scales it back up, it has to take the lesser information and then spread it out over a larger area. So that's destructive. That's going to give us poor quality. I'm going to dump that one. Let's say that the images are docked. They're tabbed like this. A very easy way to move an image from one document to the other is to just simply with the move tool, click in the middle of the image, make sure that the layer you want to move is selected and then simply drag from the image window up to the tab of the document you want it to go in, drag it back down into that document. And again, it copies and places it into that document. But we've got the same issue. This is just a regular layer and transforming this layer will be destructive. So what do we do if we don't want to be destructive? We need to convert this into a smart object. There are a couple ways you could do that. You could go up to Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object, and there we see the Smart Object symbol. Or you could go up under Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and this will tell you that it's going to convert it into a Smart Object. Say OK, and again, we've got a Smart Object. Now let's just test it. We'll scale this down. Hit Return. And now I'm going to scale it back up. And let's just check the percentage that it's indicating up here. This says that it's a little over 41%. That seems right. That is relative to the original document. This is exactly like doing the place embed. So either use the place embed or the drag and drop and then convert the layer to a smart object. That's going to allow you to transform non-destructively. Okay, now in another tutorial, I will talk about how to refine the masks and how to color correct the images. But it looks like the car was actually shot in the sand dunes. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching.